Okay, my friends, for many years, uh, whenever the subject of consciousness or dormant non-local potentials or extrasensory experience is concerned, whenever I bring it up, uh, my scientific colleagues always say, what's the empirical evidence? What's the science behind it? And I've always argued that uh, uh, empirical evidence uh, being a species specific observation or snapshot uh, that requires a human brain um, is not getting us closer to fundamental reality or truth it gives us inferential knowledge but not direct experience and uh, to keep raising um, science as an argument against spiritual experiences or understanding consciousness or in, invoking the idea that there's no empirical evidence um, is something that, uh, you know, scientific colleagues do all the time. So this morning, I actually, because I'm on this, you know, this experience of writing this book and uh, creating arguments to support my worldview, I went on AI perplexity, uh, which is basically ChatGPT4, and said, help me create an argument for my proposal that empirical evidence or scientific inquiry or neuroscience can never give us direct understanding of consciousness because we need consciousness even to access empirical evidence and do scientific inquiry. All observations are made in consciousness. All theories are conceived in consciousness. All experiments are designed in consciousness. Also, empirical evidence is a species-specific snapshot or observation or species-specific experience that requires the human brain, and therefore it is subject to the limitations of knowing that the brain has. Empirical evidence is good for doing science, but it will not be a way of documenting anything that is spiritual, including dormant non-local potentials, out-of-body experiences, extrasensory perception, because these are experiential, and empirical evidence requires controlled experiments with protocols that are very reductionist. So empirical evidence does not give us access to fundamental truth or reality. That was my prompt. Here is the argument for your proposal. The answer, empirical evidence, scientific inquiry, and neuroscience are powerful tools for understanding the world around us. However, they have inherent limitations when it comes to grasping the nature of consciousness. We need consciousness itself to access empirical evidence and engage in scientific inquiry. All observations, theories, and experiments are ultimately rooted in our conscious experience. Empirical evidence is a species-specific snapshot or observation that relies on the human brain. As such, it is subject to the limitations of human cognition. While empirical evidence is valuable for conducting scientific research, it cannot fully capture or document phenomena that are spiritual or experiential in nature. Consciousness allows us to explore aspects of reality that go beyond the scope of empirical evidence. Concepts such as dormant non-local potentials, out-of-body experiences, and extrasensory perception are inherently experiential and cannot be fully understood or documented through empirical means alone. Furthermore, empirical evidence often relies on controlled experiments with reductionist protocols. While this research is useful for scientific inquiry, it is limited in its ability to provide access to fundamental truths or reality. In conclusion, while empirical evidence and scientific inquiry are valuable tools, they are not sufficient for gaining a direct understanding of consciousness. We must acknowledge the limitations of these approaches and recognize the need for alternative perspectives and methodologies to explore the depths of consciousness and its relationship to truth and reality. Then it goes on to talk about the limitations of empirical evidence and scientific inquiry. Empirical evidence and scientific inquiry have several limitations when it comes to understanding consciousness. Here are some of the key limitations. One, subjectivity. Consciousness is a subjective phenomenon experienced uniquely by each individual. 
empirical evidence relies on objective measurements and observations that can be replicated and validated by others. However, consciousness is inherently personal and cannot be directly measured or observed by external means. 2. Introspection. Consciousness involves introspection, which is the internal examination and awareness of one's own thoughts, feelings and experiences. While empirical evidence can capture external behaviors and brain activity associated with consciousness, it cannot access the subjective and introspective aspects of consciousness. Number three, complexity. Consciousness is a complex and multifaceted phenomenon that encompasses various aspects such as perception, self-awareness, emotions, and higher order thinking. Scientific inquiry often simplifies complex phenomena into measurable variables and focuses on specific aspects of consciousness which may not capture its full complexity. Number four, reductionism. Scientific inquiry often implies employs reductionist approaches, breaking down complex phenomena into smaller parts to study them individually. However, co however, consciousness is an integrated and holistic experience and reducing it to its component parts may overlook its emergent properties and interconnected nature. Number five, limitations of measurement. Empirical evidence relies on measurement tools and techniques that are limited in their ability to capture the full range of conscious experiences. For example, brain imaging techniques can provide insights into neural activity associated with consciousness, but cannot directly access the subjective aspects of experience. Number six, experiential nature. Consciousness is fundamentally experiential, involving subjective first-person experiences. Empirical evidence, on the other hand, relies on third person observations and objective measurements. This disparity makes it challenging to bridge the gap between subjective experience and objective data. Number seven, spiritual and transcendent aspects. Consciousness is not limited to the physical realm. It can also encompass spiritual, transcendent and non-local aspects. These aspects of consciousness are often difficult to study using empirical methods that focus primarily on the physical and observable, observable aspects of reality. In summary, while empirical evidence and scientific inquiry are valuable tools for understanding the world, they have inherent limitations when it comes to grasping the nature of consciousness. Consciousness is a complex, objective and experiential phenomenon that, requir that requires alternative perspectives and methodologies. And then it goes into details about introspection. Introspection involves the internal examination and awareness of one's own thoughts, feelings, and experiences. It provides a subjective understanding of consciousness that is deeply personal and can vary from individual to individual. However, empirical evidence relies on objective measurements and observations get, that can be replicated and validated by others. The subjective nature of introspection makes it difficult to capture and quantify through empirical methods. Introspective uh, inaccessibility. While introspection allows individuals have direct individuals to have direct access to their own conscious experiences, it is not easily accessible to external observers or researchers. Introspective experiences cannot be directly measured or observed by external means, limiting the ability of empirical methods to capture the full richness of subjective conscious experiences. Reliability and validity. validity. Introspection is prone to biases, errors, limitations. People may have difficulty accurately and reliably in reporting their own conscious experiences due to the factors such as due to factors such as memory distortions cognitive biases and the influence of external factors this raises questions about the reliability and validity of um, scientific measurements of introspective reports interpretation and communication it goes on despite these limitations introspection remains a valuable tool in the study of consciousness it provides unique insights into the subjective aspects of consciousness and can inform the development of theories and hypotheses 
that can be tested using empirical methods, integrating intros introspection, um, integrating introspection with empirical evidence may lead to a more comprehensive understanding of consciousness, bridging some of the gap. But overall, you are correct. Empirical evidence and scientific inquiry does not give us access to fundamental truth of reality. So this is how I use AI. And I, in this book, will guide you how to use AI to be a personal confidant, to be a health coach, to be a research assistant, including research in science and philosophy, and also to be a guide to take you into the depths of introspection, self-inquiry, meditation, mindfulness, and much more, and much more. I hope you find this interesting. I do, so I share it with you.